The powers that be in the U.S. felt it was time to start working on introducing such a useful system to their state once they noticed the advancements being made in the design and operations of various high-speed rail systems that are operating abroad. The groundbreaking technology will not only reduce the usage of cars in the nation, but it will also generate a large number of jobs that are sure to stimulate the economy and help to ensure that the environment won't be affected by lowering the levels of poisonous emissions in the state. Indeed, the United States hopes to imitate the cutting-edge trains and highly complex rail networks they have seen in nations like China and Japan and Asia and Belgium and the Netherlands and Europe. As such, the new high-speed rail system is poised to alter how travel is approached in the U.S. The implementation of these high-speed rail systems, it seems, may be trickier than it first appears. The U.S. has failed to complete this project for a variety of reasons despite trying to spend billions of dollars on it. Before putting in the high-speed rail system, the U.S. must resolve its challenges if it hopes to revolutionize the travel sector. Thank you for visiting our channel again, Z. Learn about the high-speed railway project that is about to revolutionize the U.S. in today's video. Is it ever going to be finished? Please take a moment to subscribe to our channel so you can see more incredible films like this one before we get the answer. Without further ado, let's get started. The usage of cars and airplanes has long been connected with the United States of America, which has had an impact on how such vehicles have evolved over time. This has led to the development of such trains to stagnate over the past few decades, despite being a fairly early player in the game of fast trains. Amtrak's Northeast Corridor, which runs from Boston to Washington with stops in New York, Philadelphia, and Baltimore, is the sole high-speed rail system in the whole country. This line's trains can only travel at a top speed of 150 miles per hour because it was first constructed more than 100 years ago. It hardly qualifies as a high-speed rail system as a result. However, given the nation's desire to reduce the harmful impacts of greenhouse gas emissions, which are causing climate change not just in the nation but also throughout the entire planet, change does seem to be on the horizon. Controlling the quantity of greenhouse gases released into the atmosphere is one of the ways the country is trying to stop the ongoing harm caused by climate change in an effort to do its part to stop the destruction of the world. The nation chose to go abroad after becoming aware of this problem in order to find a remedy. High-speed rail systems were the solution, which was identified quickly. The most extensive rail network in the world, which makes up over two-thirds of the world's railway network and has certain trains capable of reaching speeds of up to 220 miles per hour, can be seen in China, which established its own complex and effective rail system during the last decade. The LO series maglev, the fastest train in the world with a top speed of 374 miles per hour, is being developed in Japan at the moment. It is a magnetic levitation train that employs magnets to float and propel itself. It comes as no surprise that the U.S. has chosen to invest in the construction of cutting-edge high-speed rail systems throughout the nation. In order to guarantee that the high-speed rail system would become a major fixture in the nation, the Biden administration has pledged around $20 billion of its $2 trillion infrastructure plan. Several of these projects are already in the planning or development stages. However, the California High-Speed Rail, which will connect Los Angeles and San Francisco, is the most well-known of these. The most populous state in the U.S. already has a challenging six-hour commute for most drivers, but the city hopes to solve this issue by putting in the 220 miles per hour trains that will travel on the high-speed railway. It will also aid in reducing the issue with carbon emissions, as was already discussed. Voters in California approved the plans for the system in 2008 after acknowledging the advantages of the system. Bonds around $10 billion were soon earmarked for network building. A line from San Francisco to Anaheim would be constructed as part of the project's first phase. In Phase 2, if this is ever successful, the lines will be extended at both ends, with a route being built from Merced, close to San Francisco, to Sacramento, and another from L.A., near Anaheim, to San Diego. 
However, only a 119-mile corridor from Madeira to Bakersfield has been finished, despite the promise of a brand new and better transportation infrastructure. The California high-speed rail system's construction has encountered several problems, just like the building of many other megaprojects taking place across the world. First of all, such projects are notorious for going over budget, as the HS2 in the United Kingdom. Although it was once estimated that the California high-speed rail system would cost roughly $35 billion to complete the project by 2020, the realization that there is little to nothing to show for the project may shock the residents of California. Even worse, it's currently anticipated that it will cost more than $100 billion to finish the project by 2029. Second, learning that the Trump administration declared the project to be in a state of inaction despite the slow progress being made may frustrate anyone who hoped that it would ever be finished. He therefore withdrew roughly $1 billion from the project as a result. Although the Biden administration is making an effort to support the project's development by returning the $929 million to the project fund, the reality is that another obstacle to the project's completion is the lack of experience of the team members who are creating the system. The CHSRA was compelled to recruit outside contractors, whose errors caused the project to lose several hundreds of millions of dollars, unlike the Japanese, who were fortunate to have native engineers whose inventiveness brought their projects to life. Simply put, it appears that this train-to-nowhere project may be difficult to finish. However, the advantages of the innovative project are simply too compelling to overlook. As previously said, these high-speed railways would not only help the country get rid of its polluting vehicles, but they would also benefit the economy by generating millions of temporary and permanent jobs for the installation and upkeep of the high-speed trains and their stops. As a result, it is clear how the high-speed rail system will alter how this country travels over the course of the next few decades, if not generations. Although the advantages are clear, there are numerous obstacles that are making it difficult for some of these initiatives to be carried out. There is a lot of work to be done if the U.S. wishes to catch up with the rest of the globe. In addition to ensuring that the money remains appropriate and that they work diligently enough to avoid the wrath of those who don't comprehend what these trains would do for the country, they may need to improve the competency of the workers on the projects. They might be able to benefit from high-speed rail's latest technology and features solely in that way. I assume that until then, the nation will have to observe as the rest of the world travels by in its innovative trains. Our video has now come to an end. Make sure to hit the bell symbol on our channel and subscribe to receive notifications every time we release a new video.